In honor of its 20th anniversary, this week we're rewinding back to our season one episode of the 2004 film directed by Gary Winnick and written by Kathy Uspa and Josh Goldsmith. That's right, we're revisiting 13 going on 30. So much has changed since we last dropped that episode, Jackie. Have you rewatched or seen that any clips from us doing that episode? I, did. I have not. <laughs> Let me tell you, it we look like little babies, little babies. Oh. <laughs> Figuring oh. out what the hell we're doing. But since we dropped the episode, we've seen Mark Ruffalo get his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Benefer is married. And the young Jenna actually turned 30 in real life. <laughs> so buckle up because you're about to be introduced to Scrinched. My horrible attempts at 80s fying my makeup and a send off that doesn't include our iconic Be Kind and Rewind. So enjoy. Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Danielle. And I'm Jackie. And we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees re-watching some of our favorite movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. Well, happy birthday, Jenna Rink. This week, we are doing 13 Going on 30. Woo-woo! <laughs> for you who have, I don't know, lived in a trash can for most of your life and don't know what this movie is, well, it's... A wonderful movie starring Jennifer Gardner and Mark Ruffalo from 2004, where pretty much a young girl in the 80s, having her 13th birthday, wishes to be 30, flirty, flirty and, and thriving, thriving. <laughs> <laughs> and thus finds her in kind of like a big situation, and she wakes up and she is 30 years old, so let's get into it. I'm so excited. <laughs> like, I can't even harness how excited I am because as you know Jackie Jennifer Garner is one of my like handful of special ladies that I love to death and it was funny because Serena watched it with me and I, well all I said was like I have to watch 13 going on 30 and she's like <gasps> <laughs> that might not be exactly what she did but it was close enough so <laughs> Do our ratings rewind before we really get into, into it. the movie. So here's how it goes. Before we get into any movie, we will reveal the rating or Y2K versions of ourselves we give. And then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale will consist of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would plan repeat. Day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. Okay, but nothing to write home about. Game day rental. Trash. Straight up trash. So what was your rating, Jackie? A Y2K Jackie would give it a would buy it. I watched this movie quite a bit in the early aughts. Yeah, would buy it again for me as well. Pro I think I have it. I have two versions of it on DVD. Yeah. And... <laughs> I think I have it on digital as well. I very much love this movie. So I definitely have it on digital. So it is available on iTunes. I'm not sure because I own it if it's on any streaming. It is. Platforms. It's even though I own it, I still watch it on HBO Max. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's also on Netflix. So this one was free. I'm so glad that we're back on the same page with our ratings. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I think the last movie we had the same rating but you know there was a few back there that I felt like wait what happened <laughs> we were out of sync <laughs> before we dive in let's hear a word from our pod pals are you tired of waiting for sparks to fly on your dating app do you dream of running through airports to deliver an out-of-breath, unplanned monologue? Then stop doom-scrolling and start listening to Meet Cute Rom-Coms, feel-good love stories that take you from chance encounter to grand romantic gesture in just 15 minutes. We're bringing rom-coms back. Get a brand new Meet Cute series on the first Tuesday of every month with new episodes twice a week. Fall in love with Meet Cute Rom-Coms wherever you find your podcasts. Is this 
where we kiss. So we're introduced to Jenna Rink. She is kind of just like normal, thir- uh, almost 13 year old chick. It starts out on school picture day. Ugh. And that photographer did her dirty douchebag. First of all, <laughs> She said, my name is Jenna. He said, okay, Jenny. She corrected him again. And he still called her Jenny or whatever. And he didn't even like make sure that she had a good picture. But I feel like this is a conspiracy because I do recall having plenty of bad photo days in school. It gave me PTSD just watching that scene. And I, maybe because... I have a school photo day every year and they let me see my picture now and they let me retake it. Maybe that wasn't the case in the eighties, but I was like, I was like, they usually take at least a couple of pictures. They don't just take one and done. Even back then they would snap a couple. I don't know. I was just, I was very upset that he would not be like, wait, I think you blinked right knees or had your mouth open. And they used Let's to take, take it more, again. they used to take more than one. There would be a few. And then I remember they, I, didn't they send you the proofs and your parents could pick which one they wanted, right? Yes. So yeah, he, he was awful. The other thing was that just the nitpicky, it was just the cloud background. I was like, I never got to get that wonderful background. It was always those wonderful neon lights, <laughs> the lasers, <laughs> the lasers, you know, then it fast forwards to when she gets her pictures. It's pretty shitty. She runs into her bestie, Maddie, who is already obsessed with photography. I thought it was kind of cool yet very privileged that this kid had like, I know, an 800 camera in middle school yep. and was already becoming paparazzi stalker like in school. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you can see their rapport as besties. And then here comes down the hallway, the six chicks. The dumbest name ever. <laughs> yeah, like it's kind of like Heather's where, okay, what happens when you you, you want to bring someone else in the group that's not named Heather? Like, I feel like you're constrained with six chicks. Like that means there can't be, like Maddie says, you can't be in, there can't be a seventh, seventh six, chick. six chick. Yeah. And then at the end, you find out that I don't even know what her name is in the movie, Brie Larson. Oh, yeah. And I don't early, think she has a name. She's a, an early chick. movie, <laughs> early movie role for Brie Larson is kicked out when Maddie is telling Jenna, adult Maddie is telling Jenna about like what happened in high school. And he says like she was kicked out and then you became the the sixth oh I didn't you know what I don't even think I realized that part how did you know it was her that because like they didn't have names because I read some facts about oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay well had no idea so yeah the six chicks two out of the well I think there's another girl in that group that's pretty popular on like social media but I I, I don't know if she's still acting or not, but I do know that obviously Brie Larson um, became very famous from that movie. I mean, after that movie. And then Amber Benson, who was in Pretty, mm-hmm. Pretty Little Liars, is also pretty popular too, that was in that group. I just think it's really funny if you see an interview with Mark Ruff- Ruffalo, he talks about like someone asked him, isn't it cool that Brie Larson was in 13 going on 30 with you? And he was like, wait, what? <laughs> I, he like didn't realize that she Old was man even, Ruffalo. <laughs> she he was like, wait, I had no idea. And that was Brie Larson's first movie. So I thought that was really funny. But I, I give him I give him a little bit of leeway because they weren't in those scenes together. So right. like it makes sense. And he was legit an adult and right. she was still a teenager. Look, if he did remember, I would have been like, that's sus. <laughs> that's real sus. <laughs> So let's uh, let's deviate real fast and just talk about the Marvel connections. Oh yes, there's a um, lot of Marvel people in this movie. Yes, so we have Brie Larson, obviously Captain Marvel. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner slash the Hulk. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Garner was Elektra. Yeah, and Daredevil and Elektra. My favorite, Andy Serkis yeah. as Claw. And, and even, 
Yep. Even Judy Greer as the mom from (laughs) Ant-Man. Yeah. I mean, at this point, it's just kind of getting impossible to have a movie that doesn't have some sort of Marvel tie, but they had quite a bit in this movie. So, and who knows, time is still passing. You you know, they might still be hiring more people from this movie. So oddly enough, (laughs) uh, the, the funny thing is that, so we, we get to start with a kind of like a separate cast of people playing the younger versions Mm -hmm. of everybody. And originally, I think the studio was even thinking about not having the younger actors, but having the older actors play younger. And I'm just like, oh, that would have been really bad. They were middle school, not even high school. Uh, Yeah, it would have been like, I don't know. There's so many movies where they try to make the adult (laughs) actors teenagers and it doesn't work. I think like the only movie that comes to mind right now is Just Friends. Oh my God, me too. (laughs) (laughs) Where Amy Smart kind of pulled it off, but in Ryan Reynolds in no no way pulled off being a high schooler. Yeah. And the fat suit thing was so (sighs) weird. Yeah. Anyway. That's a Christmas movie. (laughs) So pretty much when Jenna runs into the six chicks, the head six chick who is Tom Tom pretty much is, you know, conferring with her about her party and all that Jenna really wants is to be a part of their clique. So Tom Tom says, well, you know, we'll come over with the cutest guy in school, which is Chris. What's Uh, Grandy, Grandy, Chris Grandy. And pretty much you can tell as the viewer that she is manipulating Jenna because she is asking, she's like, oh, we can go, but our teacher is making us do this project. And so Jenna's like, I can do it for you. So, you know, yeah, poor Jenna is a damn, what do you call those things? A, you know, the mats. The doormat. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So then you see Matt and Jenna go home. And of course they live in these huge homes in New Jersey and they're next door neighbors. So Jenna goes and gets ready for her party. You're introduced to her parents. You're introduced to her stuffing her bra, Mm -hmm. which, you know, when I watched it, I was like, I don't, I don't relate. Mm -mm. I I don't really, I was trying to hide these things. I wasn't, I didn't have any room. To I mean, them. mine came in late, but I never felt that need to like yeah. stuff my bra. I was just like, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have a couple of comments while she's watching the TV while getting ready. She, it, it's playing Jesse's girl, the Jesse's yeah. girl music video. Did people really kiss TVs? I did. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I love you, Harrison. (laughs) I never kissed a TV, so I was not, I was not aware. (laughs) Yeah, but you also had six feet posters of Lance Bass and all on Hanson in your, your room. (sighs) Don't judge. I didn't kiss them though. They were just there. (laughs) I just wanted, I felt like guardian angels watching me sleep, Danielle. (laughs) I would wake up in the middle of the night at a sleepover at your house being pair, just like so scared. (laughs) I'm not doing anything. They're there for good. Not (laughs) evil. I also really like that when her parents came in and her mom was like fixing her makeup, kind of toning it down and stuff, yeah. telling her you don't have to st- stuff your bra. And Jenny's, Jenna is lamenting about she wants to be like the girls on the magazines. Her mom's response was, those aren't people. Those are <laughs> models. I'm like, yes, this is true. And this is a phenomenon that is still happening today. Yeah where those people are not real yeah even the models aren't even living those lives no yeah it's it's crazy but I did love how it was the article she was reading was 30 flirty and and thriving 30 best years of your life and so I was like you know what hell yeah it is (laughs) really (laughs) I now I think back on it like I had fun in my 20s but there is nothing like having a bank account that has money in it, (laughs) (laughs) being able to like 
know where you stand in life and just feeling a lot better of just, just knowing yourself. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of excited that forties are going to be pretty damn good too. Yeah. Unless I have a kid and ruin it. So we'll see. <laughs> so obviously party set parents, she's, she kicks her parents out. You know, I guess this is like her first big party. So she doesn't want her parents there. I wasn't able to do that until I was 16. And I had to do the same thing Jenna did on my 16th birthday. My mom invited all of these people that were her friends to my 16th party, where it was my first like real boy girl situation. And I pushed them all into her bedroom. She was so mad and said I was so rude, but it wasn't even worth it because my party was lame. Jackie doesn't know because she wasn't there because she was away. Sorry. (laughs) Gee, I don't, but I don't think, I don't remember you being at my 16th birthday. I don't know why I wouldn't take a journey with me. Shall you? What was, (laughs) what was your 16th birthday? It was Teletubbies themed. And (laughs) I definitely wasn't there. And everyone was late. And so my mom, I have a picture somewhere of me wearing a Teletubbies (laughs) party hat spread with the Teletubbies. I'm just, I'm sorry. Tablecloth and everything, the plates. And I'm just hanging my head because no Wait, but why was it Teletubby themed? Because 16 year old Jackie thought it was cool to like things like Teletubbies (laughs) and Pokemon. You know, I I, I was nostalgic for things that were not really that old. (laughs) Don't even have words. (laughs) So, okay. I I really don't know why I wouldn't be at your 16th birthday. That's so weird. Unless Christine just didn't let you come. That might have been it, or yeah. maybe we weren't like that friendly yet. Well, because we would have met in October, and my birthday's in March, so it may have been the getting to know you period. Because we didn't go see a movie together until May. Until May, yeah. yeah. I I may not have been invited, Jackie, <laughs> which may be a bigger discussion later <laughs> when we get off this Zoom. <laughs> Anywho, I'll, I'll, I'll throw another Teletubbies theme birthday party. Please so don't. You can attend. <laughs> <Please don't. laughs> That's priceless. So, <laughs> pretty much, Jenna's downstairs in the basement with Matt. Maddie decides, um, "What did I miss?" I want a base basement. Oh man, that is the one thing I miss about living up north. My grandma had an amazing basement. I used to love it. My uncle used to have a pretty cool basement too. My auntie planned. and uncle in Rhode Island, they were actually my great aunt and uncle. They had a basement and it was like my favorite thing when we went there because they had like a bar down there and like so the cool. big TV. I'm like, this is amazing. And then you live in Florida where you dig five feet and you hit water so you can't have a basement there (laughs) yeah and now I live in Texas where it's limestone five feet down can't build a basement here I'm like all I want it's a basement it's give and take you know like we didn't have winters we had swimming (laughs) pools you know like in 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 the ground swimming pools well they had those weirdo ones in in the north that always boys that made me feel like this shit's gonna explode I feel it (laughs) I don't feel safe. <laughs> Pretty much getting back to the party, Maddie decides that he wants to give Jenna her gift. And let me just tell you, grown up Danielle, watching this scene, Maddie would have got it on spot. <laughs> <laughs> I did write the Jenna dream house with a heart next to it. Yeah, Maddie would have gotten it because, and it like, the thing I love about it, it was handcrafted. Like he yes. put work into that. And even though he hated Rick Springfield, he put him in there because he knew Jenna loved him. But Maddie was not a dumb dumb. He made sure to put himself in that dream house as well. <laughs> <laughs> loved it. So cute. And when and then he gets the magic. What is it? The wish. Yeah. Fit wish dust. Wish dust. Glitter. All I thought was, I said this to Serena, I said, mom would kick our ass if we got all that (laughs) glitter on the floor. (laughs) Because, you know, that's all it was. And then Jenna being an asshole, she decides to put it in the closet and hide it away. 
and then all the six chicks and Chris Grandy, you see her go to get the, the door for the, you know, these kids. My sister was like, are they, why are grown ass men coming to this party? I said, they're kids. Ken said, did Hanson just get out of the car? <laughs> She was like, why do they have Letterman jackets? I was like, JV? I don't oh. know. Maybe that's what, how they were doing it in 87. I have no idea. So they all get there. She had a really good spread of food, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, Maddie dancing like no one is watching. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Crowded House that he was listening to, I think? It's no. the burning Burn. down the house. Oh, shit. I don't right? know. Yeah, it is. I just don't know who sings it, but it doesn't matter. Know. So Maddie's dancing. He looks, you know, the kids persecute him for that. And then he says he's going to go get his Casio. I was just thinking to myself, again, Maddie's rich as fuck. Do you know how much some Casios were? So he goes, he leaves. Then Tom Tom says, hey, where's that report? By the way, let's play Seven Minutes in Heaven. I do feel like I was such a late bloomer. I never got to play that game. I never played it either. Not that I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have nostalgia for missing out on seven minutes in heaven. It just, I, I just see it awkward. in so many movies and I'm like, did everyone do this? Like, how did, how did that didn't spin the bottle? We never played that either. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, no, no, we didn't. Gross. Who, who wants to kiss a bunch, a bunch of randos? No, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Even the ones you knew you didn't want to kiss. <laughs> so they put Jenna in the closet. She wraps her eyes with her scarf, steals her presentation that Jenna wrote. All of them grab all the food and they dip, mm. which I just think like you guys, there's a special hell for you, honestly and truly. They were dicks. They were. And then here comes Maddie back with his Casio and Tom Tom says, you know, Jenna's in the closet waiting for you. He goes in. She's like, oh, Chris. And he's like, hold up, bitch. I ain't Chris. And she has like a full on Karen-esque meltdown. I literally wrote, what a wench (laughs) yelling at Maddie like that. He wrote her a song and built her a dream house. I I mean, to me, I don't see nothing but husband material. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she has a full on meltdown, pushes Maddie, closes the door, starts knocking her head like a psychopath. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden that, that wonderful glitter turns into magic. I love when movies have magic, but don't explain it. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, we're just going to go with this. And then she wakes up. And what I loved was the tie-in of that fabric that they used for the neck scarf that was put on her eyes. When she wakes up as 30, it turns into her eye mask. And later down the line, it turns into the dress. The lady, yes. who, the costume designer actually on this movie has worked with Jennifer Garner, like in seven different movies. That's so awesome. much, so much so that I think they worked together in that last movie yesterday that was on Netflix. And mm-hmm. there's a scene where she's wearing this pearl necklace and it's from 13 going on 30 as like cool. a, yeah, a little shout out. So like you said, it's very big ask where she wakes up and she's a grown up. Ken turns me <laughs> and he said she got scrunched. What? <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Scrunched? He's like, you know, scrunched. Like I was the idiot. Right. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I really don't know what you mean with scrunched. And he's like, you know, the guy and the ghost visits him. Scrooge. <laughs> Hold on. Did you just combine Scrooge and Grinch and get that Grinch out of that? So now that is my new favorite term for anything. But you what is it? Grinched. But what does it mean? Like over the course of the movie, she realizes like she was a uh, shitty person. And so then she has an opportunity to go and like write things. You know what? I'm I'm sorry, Ken, that I even laughed at that. That's actually very smart. I like that. <laughs> Aside from it being scrunched and not scrooged. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the Grinch does learn the same way too. Yeah. So He's, I mean, he wasn't he wasn't wrong. No. Making up words and shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, she wakes up in her Fifth Avenue apartment. Which is the same apartment that's actually in the magazine that she's reading. Ah. So it's just like an updated version. Her penthouse on uh, in Manhattan. 
So pretty much fast forward, she's trying to like get, figure out what the hell's happening. She mm-hmm. realizes that she's in this older version of herself, you know, in a body that is still her. She realizes she has a boyfriend, but she doesn't, I don't know if she knows, she just thinks there's some strange guy. She's just all discombobulated. And you keep calling your sweep on him. <laughs> <laughs> My sister said, he's a himbo. I said, yes, he is. He is a himbo. Yeah. Good on uh, you, Serena. <laughs> <laughs> so she runs out pretty much in like a slip and a jacket and mm-hmm. everybody's like, that's fine. It's I mean, the 90s or it's the early 2000s. And in the late 90s, we went through a yeah. slip nighty as a dress phase. <laughs> yeah. I want I want to say maybe Courtney. early 2000s. Well, even like Courtney Love was wearing them in the early 90s. Like yeah. she'd wear those like baby doll dresses and stuff like that. Whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so she runs outside and she's introduced to her best friend's coworker who we find out is actually Tom, Tom, all grown up, which is Judy Mm -hmm. Greer, who Jennifer Garner and Judy Greer are actually really good friends in real life. So they were both saying how hard it was to be mean to each other on the set. This was Jennifer Garner's first big movie like that she starred in. Good job, Jen. (laughs) (laughs) So they get in this wonderful limousine or car service that picks them up and they head to their job and Tom, Tom kind of gives her a download of what the hell's going on. Like you work for poise, you're an editor, I'm an editor. And, you know, Jenna's like, oh my God, this is awesome. But I don't know what the hell's going on still. I like when they go in and you're introduced to Richard played by Andy (laughs) Serkis. And he yells, who's your daddy? And she turns around and goes, wait and rink. I know. (laughs) That's my favorite line of the whole movie. Just the way that she says it. And you know what? I What I love about Jennifer Garner is that like she just encompasses every role that she takes. But there's not a lot of people that would have been able to take on this role and have that like childlike innocence. And yes. that's why <clears throat> I think Big was so good with Tom Hanks because he was able to, you know, resonate the same way. Yeah, like, they you- have that enthusiasm for like, all of the things in life and like, wow, this is so cool. Yeah. You can believe it's like a 13 year old really in their body. Yeah. The other line from that scene that I love was her secretary walks up and she says, have you made a decision on (laughs) Eminem? Jenna says, plain, ah, peanut. (laughs) Plain. So good. I just think it's so weird. Like if you came out of your apartment talk on all sorts of craziness, didn't know what your cell phone was, didn't know where we work. Like there were so many signs that a good friend would have been like, you know what, baby girl, let's, let's take a day off. Cause, uh, something's wrong. You, you know? need to go back to bed. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been highly concerned. You know, there were so many weird things that were mm-hmm. happening there. So, you know, she goes into work and then you get kind of like that Easter egg when she goes in her office and she's going through those papers in her drawer. You see those sparkle envelopes Mm -hmm. in there. But you don't really notice them. But two and two together. Another cool thing is there is a picture of Madonna in her office and it's signed from Madonna. But if you, in the beginning of the movie, it was actually on her wall, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't signed. So I thought that was a cool throwback. And one thing we didn't even talk about was that the movie exactly 13 minutes into the movie is when Jenna turns 30, which I thought was another cool play on. Yeah. The little cinematic um, yeah. <laughs> touches that they did. So she's, she's very concerned and she knows the one person that will ground her is Maddie. And so she asked her secretary to get his phone number and she shows up at his apartment And he's super confused because since that day of her 13th birthday where she rejected him, they were no longer friends. Yeah. And I think he kind of like, I mean, she feels safe enough to tell him what is happening to her versus Mm -hmm. that what she wasn't able to actually tell Tom Tom, which I thought was, you know, telling. And I feel like he kind of believes her, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, because she's acting so bizarre. Yeah. Like it's it's why would some random person just come and make this up but I also 
think that he sees a glimmer of who he loved when he was Mm -hmm. younger. And I think that's what puts it over the edge for him. And I'm just going to say this. I love Mark Ruffalo. (laughs) (laughs) He always has wet mouth. Like oh it's no it's very it, wet. It, it, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna see that like I haven't noticed it but now that's what I'm gonna see thanks Jackie uh, so I'm sorry I, I've ruined Mark Ruffalo for everyone but <sighs> adore him he just always has wet mouth the one thing that I want to talk about before we go any further mm-hmm. is did JLo get a check for as much that she's in that movie because she's on the cover of that magazine. Like she's all sprinkled throughout that movie. But the fun, right. the fun fact about that whole thing, that's all coming back together, especially right now, because mm-hmm. Benifer is back. While filming that movie, J-Lo and Ben Affleck were together. Mm-hmm. As we know, Jen Garner married Ben Affleck later. Mm-hmm. In 2004, they started dating again. They started dating. But when the movie was being made, he was with J-Lo. And then the movie came out in 2004. And then J- J-Lo and Benifer, J-Lo and Ben were done. And mm-hmm. then Jennifer Garner and Ben started dating, you know, after they had met on the scene of Daredevil years before. So I was just like, look at this, look <laughs> at this. And now I'm, it's full circle. But could you imagine being J-Lo? You broke up with you like a few weeks before your wedding. Y'all break yeah. up. He goes and marries another Jennifer who he was in a movie with while y'all were together. To, right. Friends. Yeah. And then not only is he with this bitch, I'm all over this goddamn movie that she's in. <laughs> I would have been hella pissed. But I guess, she, <laughs> I guess she's getting the last laugh now. Even if mm-hmm. it's just a publicity stunt, I'm I'm 100% invested. Like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to call that out because I was just like this is so weird like JLo is all over this movie so she's at the magazine no sorry we, she met Maddie he's he agreed to help her out well I think no no oh yeah help her out by going to her apartment and stuff like that yeah, yeah you're right sorry and then she, she finds like, out she finds out that she's no longer close with her parents and they're like off on a cruise and she's upset that they didn't take her with her. <laughs> I which I would that. be too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that line when she called the answer machine and they're like, Yeah, we're on a cruise. Like, how could you go on a cruise without me? <laughs> yeah. And then she gets all dressed because they have a party that evening. She invites Maddie before he leaves and mm-hmm. Then, of course, you can't have an early 2000s, late 90s movie without some sort of crazy closet scene, getting dressed up scene. And she puts on some cool outfit. And I don't know what she was doing with her hair, but there was a lot of sparkles and clips. (laughs) (laughs) Well, she curled it, but then it was all spiky. Yes, I would see. I was watching (laughs) that, too. I was like, what happens? (laughs) And then she gets in the elevator, talks to this teen girl, and the girl's like, you've never talked to me before. This is weird. And then they start complimenting each other in the way that, like, 13-year-old girls trying to make friends do. Like, I like your hair. Oh, I like your dress. And she says, it's because I got these incredible boobs to fill it out. <laughs> and I was like, Jen, baby girl, I love you, but I'm a, I'm a A+, plus, maybe a B. <laughs> And that dress is not flattering in the boobage area. No, it you got it one big boob and yeah. it's all smushed. Yeah, well, she was 13. She didn't know better. She probably this didn't even true. put on the right bra. But I, I, there's so many weird things in this movie when it comes to like adult Jenna interacting with young children. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, this is weird. Why are you asking this child if she could see your underwear? Yeah. So she goes to the party. She's excited because she can get her drank on for the mm-hmm. first time. Why does she keep throwing food out? I don't know. I felt so bad for that guy that kept getting hit with all the stuff. I would have been hella pissed. The party is becoming a wash. And so her boss, played by Andy Circus and Tom Tom, I what is her real name? What is she called? See. Lucy. 
and Lucy are like, this is really bad. They run into the other editor of the competing magazine, Sparkle, Trish, and which I love. She calls her frizzy. And she said, you are mean and rude and sloppy and frizzy. And I don't like you at all. <laughs> God, I wish I could just say that to all the people I can't stand. To Same. Their face. Yeah. <laughs> so she, of course, thinks, <laughs> what's the best way to make this party pop? I know, get a bunch of drunk white people to do thriller, which is now a 17 year old dance. Oh, okay. Well, well, or well, 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 I mean, it's still cool. It is cool, <laughs> but how many people know all the steps to thriller? I do. <laughs> well, in the 2000s. Well, you know what? I think those people would have because all of those kids, all those people grew were around up. the age range who grew up. Like if we did it at our age, people would kind of know, but not really. Mm-hmm. But for them, when MTV only played like six different videos, they probably all memorized Diller secretly. True. Except Mark Ruffalo, who had a huge issue. Tell us why, <laughs> Jackie. Tell us why. Uh, Mark Ruffalo almost did not do this movie because he had to participate in the thriller dance scene and he was not comfortable doing so. And I believe it was Jennifer Garner who convinced him that he could do hard things (laughs) and kind of coached him through it and encouraged him. And because their chemistry was so good and her enthusiasm was so infectious, he felt more comfortable to do the dance. And they had dance classes together. It was her... Him and Judy Greer, I think, all took dance classes. Andy Circus did not need those dance classes, clearly. <laughs> he had been waiting his whole life for this. But if you watch the movie, knowing this fact now, you can see how strategically they tried to hide Matt, um, Mark Ruffalo, uh, mm-hmm. Maddie. <clears throat> so you couldn't see how poorly he could dance. And then he was able to play off that. I don't quite remember the dance yeah. kind of vibes for a while. Because he when- was a talking heads. He wasn't a <laughs> Michael Jackson. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. <laughs> One of the most iconic lines from that scene from the whole movie is yeah. the, Maddie, Maddie, come here. It's a thriller. <laughs> <laughs> thriller, Maddie. Yeah. And then my favorite part is when she's walking like she starts doing the the dance and then she sees Maddie and she starts calling him. But when she goes to get him, she does that like boob shaking me. <laughs> I was like, oh, I love this peach so much. <laughs> so yeah, they do the dance, <clears throat> but Maddie like dips out halfway through. I don't know mm-hmm. if it's guilt or whatever. Because um, Maddie does have a fiance. A fiance. Yeah. Her name is, hold on, I wrote it down. I Wendy liked, Wendy the passive aggressive I know you're trying to steal my man but I ain't even gonna pay attention to you ho. Mm-hmm. I'm not mad at her because you know what as I went through this movie you could think it's Wendy that's the villain you can think, think it's Tom Tom that's the villain but Jenna is the villain in this movie yes and not current Jenna but the one that the life in which she has come into that Jenna mm-hmm. who existed she a bitch she was a garbage person. Yeah, she was awful. Yeah. So I don't have any slander for Wendy. No, she was just, she was engaged. She thought she was solid. I mean, the only thing I could fault her for was like trying to tell Maddie he had to move to the Windy City. Well, she probably was making more money than him. That's true. And he can freelance anywhere. Talk. Yeah. Yeah. So we fast forward to dinner out with Tom Tom. Yeah. Now here's another cringy scene. Oh God. It was so bad. Tom Tom tells Jenna that there's a guy like checking her out. Jenna like slightly looks behind her and is like, really? And gets really excited. And then she proceeds to walk like we think to this man. She walks over to a child and starts to flirt with him and tried to ask him out. And I'm like, huh. And he flirts back. <laughs> well, he's, a, I mean, come on, of course. But uh, like, just that kid has some balls because <laughs> like, oh, this gorgeous 30 year old woman. Sure. What's your name? What's your number? <laughs> I just was like, oh, oh God. But at least, you know, 
her friend comes and says, okay, hey, by the way, this is bad. So then they go outside. They run into Maddie. He realizes Mm Tom-Tom is Lucy. Lucy is Tom-Tom and they have their banter because they hate each other. And then- The boyfriend shows up. Well, Wendy comes- Oh yeah, that's and right. <laughs> Jenna's like, I don't, I don't, you're who went now? Yeah. <laughs> and then the himbo comes. Yeah. Oh, that himbo. And then they go back to the himbo's apartment. He has a very large shark in a very small tank, which was upsetting and concerning. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about how many forms were in his underwear. Serena and I were like, wait. That don't look right. <laughs> there is a lot of, there's a lot going on there. Well, first off, we're in the tidy whities. Yeah. Not a sexy undergarment in mm. any form or fashion. Oh. And then the raunchy striptease, which was not raunchy. <laughs> he has no rhythm. And that's coming from someone who also has no rhythm, but knows <laughs> not to try and give a striptease. Because of the no rhythm having. Is it and me? then huh. I realized <laughs> that it was Ice Ice Baby because he was a hockey player. Really? You just <laughs> realized that, Jackie? Then now, you know, sometimes things go over my head for many, many years. <laughs> I met Vanilla Ice once. I have a picture with him. It's one of my crowning moments. <laughs> we, we just going to name drop every episode now. <laughs> It was relevant. So they she leaves. And then is this when they go to work and they find out that the magazine is? Yes. Let's talk about that outfit. Which one? The one where she has what looks like porcupine quills in her hair in those oh, two low buns. Yeah. And the pigtail buns. And it's like a camo green, like olive drab green. Yeah. Jumpsuit. And that tank like, top. It is so good. Perfection. Like and out that, of all of her outfits, that was my that favorite. One, yeah, and the purse. I I don't yes. know which which purse it is, but I thought it was Dior, but I not I'm not sure. But I remember like a few of them looking the same and just ugh, so so good, so good, <sighs> so so good. This is how despicable Jenna 1.0 was, or 2.0. I'm not really sure which one to call her. I'll say 2.0. She literally has the art director's husband come into her office so that they can get it on because she's done it before. You mm. like, dis- like, disgusting. And I love her reaction. Yeah. Um, pookie? You mean pukey? <laughs> we just said the 13 year old. <laughs> I feel like I would have said that. <laughs> and also when she's sitting in that meeting and she has a roll up oh. around her finger and she's just like gnawing on it, like that is also a middle school thing if I've ever seen it. Oh, uh, good old fruit roll ups. And I love how like excited that her secretary gets watching her transition. Yeah. Also, her clothes, if you notice that they start to become warmer colors throughout mm-hmm. the movies, the movie as Jenna, Jenna's personality progresses to kinder. Yeah. So they find out that the magazine's going under and that they have to have a redesign. And then after that scene of her punch knocking that guy in his balls or whatever. Mm-hmm. She walks over and she accidentally hears Tom Tom and another person. I maybe it's the art director. I don't know. <laughs> she was so busy plotting, she would see her husband was trash. They were talking about, you know, doing a separate proposal without Jenna. Yeah. And so then Jenna has to, dis- you know, decide that she's going to go into her own. And she, she reaches out to Maddie. Yeah. Uh, to be the photographer. And she has this wonderful idea of getting back to almost a yearbook. Now you yes. say, you say wonderful. I, this is, this is the only part of the movie that really like. gives me problems. Like as, as a marketer and okay. So like, when you talk about redesign for a magazine, having a, but like to me, all she did was take a bunch of pictures 
and had a theme, which would have been maybe a special issue or like something that would have been in the magazine, but not what I would call as a redesign. Like, unless you're telling me that this entire magazine is just going to be a yearbook style, like, are you just, are you trying to say that you're getting back to having real life people in it? I, I just, I felt like it, and, and it could be, it would be marketed to a larger audience, you know, <laughs> a broader yeah and again I'd be like yeah that's not that's not really smart that's because in magazines you have your niches for a reason because when you try to target to everybody then you really don't know how to to find your target audience if everybody's your target you're not a newspaper right like you're a fashion magazine well I enjoyed the photo shoot. <laughs> I know, but I know, and I, I know everyone's not going to feel the same way as me and I get it, but it really was, it's always been troubling to me. And I want to talk to somebody like, can I talk to your manager, please? And tell me <laughs> what's happening. Like that always bothered me, but <clears throat> when he, when I will say when she went to talk to Matt about doing the photography, which she had I'm assuming a pretty fat check for him cut already. Yeah. And then she was like half now, half when you finish. Right. He had talked about in some context, how he hadn't felt that way about a girl since high school, which was her falling in love. And I thought that was really sweet because it was, yeah, it was definitely Jenna. And then that whole montage, one, like my favorite Billy Joel song ever. Oh, me too. Vienna is such a beautiful song and it fits so perfectly in that in that scene and that's when she's going home and kind of rediscovering it was weird that as a 30 year old woman she crawled in bed with her parents oh no that wasn't what was (laughs) weird to me I mean I don't know what the experience is to have a parent that has like like my parents weren't together. So it, was, it probably would have been weird to like get in the bed with both my parents, but mm-hmm. yeah, I get in the bed with my mom and my grandma a lot. <laughs> <laughs> if it, if, if well, things and are I guess stressful. It, just, it felt weird because you know that she literally has not talked to her parents in like two years and all of a sudden she's home and crawling into bed with them. Like it just, it felt. I, to me, place. it felt, it, it felt it actually felt normal because yes, she's there. She's 30, but we, this is still the 13 year old and the 13 mm-hmm. year old would have crawled into the bed with her mom. Yeah. And you know, it's raining, it's thundering. It, it felt like something a kid would do. And I think they probably did that to still remind us that she still is that kid. But, I also um, had a question. What if Matt had said no to the photo shoot? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> She would have gotten another photographer. And how much did she spend? Because there was a lot of props, setup, extras. That was not, we're just going to run to Central Park and do this. Probably a good 50 to $60,000. Yeah, that's for for a magazine that's going under, I feel like that would not have been in the budget for them. Yeah you they probably would have been like we have no budget to come up with this redesign yep yeah that's why we're asking y'all right (laughs) yeah again all of those things like there was a entertainment weekly article that went through just like how much it would have cost for matt and jenna to live in their new york city apartments he him Mm -hmm. living in greenwich village you know and her living in um, park avenue like millions of dollars it not even didn't even make sense for a photographer of his caliber to have that Greenwich Village apartment crazy not even possible but if he was getting them that money that Casio money from his parents then maybe <laughs> maybe it made sense they were just putting him up in, a, in an apartment in Greenwich Village to fulfill his lifelong dream <laughs> but we have to talk about the sleepover scene oh gosh yeah like as a godmother or an auntie, close friend, maybe I could see this scenario happening where I am having a slumber party for all these children, but mm-hmm. not for the rando neighbor who doesn't talk to anybody. All of a sudden, am I going to let seven underage children have a sleepover with this random lady? 
And like they're wearing her bras, they're wearing <laughs> her clothes. Like it's just very awkward. It's so weird. And so apparently the director fought the studio on this. He did not want the scene. Like, and I understand it didn't make any damn sense. Mm-hmm. But the studio, for some reason, really wanted it. I don't know why. I mean, I guess it performed well. People say that they like this scene. I just think you and I just think it's weird, but yeah. we could be, I don't know. Some things don't age well that I think this scene is one of them. Agreed. Hopping back to the photo shoot, they finished the photo shoot. It was a huge success. Her and Maddie are now walking around New York city to like celebrate. They get their razzles, their favorite candy. Which I don't think is believable at all because I've been to many a, a corner store in New York and I know there's no damn razzles. <laughs> so they a lie. And then that whole awkward exchange where Jenna's demanding that Maddie look at her tongue and then show her his tongue. Like it just, it was a very, very clunky, awkward exchange. And then they go and swing on the swings and they're like, whoever jumps the furthest has to buy dinner or something like that. And then that swing jump execution, not stellar. <laughs> I just kept thinking grass stains, grass stains. Or was <laughs> well, it, was like, it sand? I'm it was not sure. sand. Yeah. Yeah. And then she lands on top of him and they have this moment where it feels like they're going to kiss me as a viewer. Like he's engaged to be married. He is betrothed to another. Maddie is playing with fire. <laughs> well, you know what they say. If he ain't married, he's still single. I'm just saying <laughs> that's what the streets mm-hmm. say. It's mm-hmm. not me. They go into the office the next day, have their proposals. Tom Tom does this weird acid LSD proposal <laughs> where it's, she said, we're going to do heroin chic one better. We're going to OD. <laughs> and then she says, cause of death chicness i'm like this, <laughs> this is not any sense i'm uncomfortable and are you promoting drugs in a magazine now is this and, what's happening and when it like when andy circus's face was like the <laughs> fuck he you know then she leaves and is on a rampage she's like throwing shit on the floor oh, she hit that bag that yeah. empty bag i was dying And then, of course, she goes into Jenna's office and start looking through her shit, finds out that Jenna has been the mole the whole time with Sparkle. Mm -hmm. Unbeknownst to everybody else, she makes her own deal to be editor in chief at Sparkle. And Mm -hmm. at this time, Maddie walks in looking for Jenna because, you know, they were supposed to go out to dinner, I think. Yeah. And and Wendy came back into town and. Mm -hmm. They decided to move up the wedding, but Jenna doesn't know all of this. And then Tom Tom says whatever she says to him, asks him to sign a release un- unknowingly. He signs it. He just, you know, wanted to talk to Jenna and he doesn't want to deal with Tom Tom. Jenna goes and presents her wonderful yearbook idea that makes no sense to me. And everyone loves it. And they think they're going to save the magazine. And then not too long after, Jenna finds out from her boss that Tom Tom has dicked them all over. The magazine is going under and she um, stole Jenna's idea and sold it to sparkle sparkle. And she tries to confront Tom Tom, but you know, again, Tom Tom's not the villain. She's not. She's like, do you want to be the pot or the kettle? You were doing the thing and I just did it back to you. Like, right. Then Jenna Jenna is very upset Matt stands her up because he was going to tell her that he couldn't go to the restaurant and right. that message was never relayed. So she's very upset. And I think Tom Tom does Tom Tom tell her that the weddings moved up. How does she find out that the weddings moved up? I feel like it had to be her because I don't think she talks to anybody else. And so then she she goes and She, she goes across New York. She hops in a cab to go to New Jersey and lo and behold, what's his name? Chris Grandy. Chris Chris Grandy Grandy is driving the cab played by Jim Gaffigan (laughs) who has no funny lines. And I'm like, this is a very underused actor that you are. I wonder like, was that one of, that wasn't one of his first movies, was it? I don't know. I'd have to look. 
But um, I just was like, wait a minute. Is that, is that Jim Gaffigan? <laughs> and then I was like, why is he not being funny? This whole scene is not funny and it's stupid. Yeah. Well, he just, I think he just needed a paycheck. <laughs> I, I think that's just one of those cases. And uh, so she shows up, she, she tells Matt her true feelings for him. And I mean, he's a, a upstanding guy and he's like no maybe if things had gone this way in high school things would be different but I've committed to Wendy I'm gonna marry Wendy and Jenna accepts that she's kind of just like you don't always get the dream house and I hope that you're really happy and so you see that very scrunched yeah (laughs) like we've come (laughs) to terms full circle she is back to the Jenna Right. Of old. And that had to happen. Like if he had left and whatever, then, you know, Jenna has to go back in time. Don't forget yeah, to know, write us a some, review. And then she so sees if you want to be featured and help us grow, head to house, Apple, Spotify, Podchasers, iHeartRadio, or any of your favorite podcast Jenna platforms Dream and, and his, leave us a review. In his room. And so she, she takes it to her house. And as she's walking outside, the wind blows more. Like wish litter. dust <laughs> <laughs> at least it's outside this time yeah and she takes off her blindfold and she is back in her basement as a 13 year old and attacks matt with a big old kiss and he's like you good at this <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're doing yeah and then together forever and then the, it cuts to them getting married and moving into a house that looks exactly like the, the dream, dream house. house he had built, the same color pink and everything. It also looks like the two chains trap house in Atlanta. Just putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. oh, and and as teenage Jenna and Matt are running upstairs, she runs by Tom Tom snatches the the essay rips it up and calls her a biatch (laughs) (laughs) there you have it people we have done 13 going on 30 transform from a listener to a podcast superhero your reviews are the secret sauce that fuels our journey to podcasting greatness join the ranks of the mighty by leaving your mark on apple spotify pod chasers iHeartRadio, good pods or wherever your podcasting heart leads If you like what you hear and you want to buy us a virtual cup of coffee to say thank you, if we made you laugh, head on over to ko-fi.com slash no more late fees. So Jackie, what is your, what is your rating for now? You're not going to be happy. Why? (laughs) Upon rewatching, I just did not enjoy it as much as I used to. And it used to be a movie that I would rewatch all the time, but I'm, I'm thinking it's a a two day rental for me now. Like it's okay. And if it's, if someone puts it on, I'm like, not going to say no, but I don't feel like it's going to be something that I, on a Sunday afternoon, have nothing else to do. I'm going to put it on. Well, I'm not upset because we had to push back and just even doing this recording a few times and it took me forever to rewatch this movie. I was not as gung ho as I wanted to be to rewatch <laughs> it. And I, I wasn't really sure why. I feel like being an adult ruins everything. Even though this didn't come out when we were kids, I just. It I, still was kind of, we were young enough. We were 22 when this movie came out. Yeah. And so we were young enough to still have those dreams and aspirations of like, <laughs> you two can have a Jenna Rank closet if you yeah. work hard. And become a fashion editor at a magazine. Yeah, it's true. I'm somewhere between a five-day rental and a two-day rental. I think I'm going to say five-day rental. I would watch again. And when it's Mm -hmm. on randomly on like TBS, I do stop and I watch it. So it's definitely a five-day, but it's no longer all the way at the top of my list anymore. Yeah, there there are definitely movies from the 90s and 2000s that are like my go-to and this is just not one of them yeah once they we start going down our list of other movies people are gonna be like what's wrong with these two for real but jen baby girl i just want you to know does they got nothing to do with our Mm -hmm. relationship no 100 love you 
I watch I watch Alias over and over again. I watch she Felicity is, for your episodes. She is adorable on her little cooking, dancing, uh, having her own little farm, just being a homemaker insta. She just seems like, you know, I know like not a lot of people about celebrity boistering boist and I get it, but I feel like she's authentically a sweet, caring person and mm-hmm. has the patience of God dealing with the alcoholic loser as a baby daddy. So yeah, the thing about this movie plot or not, she freaking cares the whole damn yes. thing. Yeah. So uh, I'll say that, but Tell us your thoughts if you agree with Jackie and I's ratings. We are on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube at No More Late Fees. So if you have any feedback for us, hit us up at our quick drop 909-601-NMLF. You can twat us at the Twitters, hum us at the threads, and you can be featured on a future episode. Catch us back next week. We will be doing Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones in honor of Star Wars Day. Have a great week and catch us next time.